Hi, I'm Michelle Promaleko, the editorial director of The Well, and I'm here with Dr. Elena Clemenko, one of our amazing functional medicine doctors here at The Well. And we wanted to come on today to talk about coronavirus because there's so much anxiety and it's ramping up so much with every new news headline. So I wanted to get the intel from the expert source. Hi, Elena. Hi, Michelle. So, so okay, so let's just jump right into it. People are freaking out about coronavirus. Yes. Tell us what it is. What just what kind of virus is it? So the coronavirus is there actually a family of viruses that we all know and uh, been exposed to in the past. But this novel coronavirus is a little bit more um, virulent uh, than the previous. And as you know, it came from China, from contaminated meat, well, there are animals, but. That's, that's basically how it started. And today it's spreading, but first of all, we don't need to worry about it. It's, even though it's out there, majority of us will never see it. And if we, even if we see, we're probably gonna, uh, overcome it with, with flying colors. So one way to keep it in perspective is to compare it, at least numbers wise, to the seasonal flu. Correct. So, Compared to the seasonal flu, it's significantly less prevalent. So right. 30 to 40. 30 to 40 million, million people, people get the seasonal flu every year. Huge numbers. Yes. So when you compare that to what we're seeing even globally with corona, with this novel yeah. coronavirus. And we're not freaking out about that. And we're not <laughs> freaking out about that because it's not new and we're, right. we're used to hearing about it. Yes. And we feel like we have some defense against it. Correct. So, but it's a respiratory illness. It's, you the know. symptoms will be the fever, right. or upper respiratory tract infections, or symptoms, and a uh, majority of people probably will tolerate it just on the level of the fever, body aches, and, and uh, a runny nose. Only cases that are going to get deeper to their respiratory tract mm -hmm. infection will be probably attending to the professionals. In the okay, world. so to keep it from getting to that point, we want to boost our immunity. So yes. whether we're dealing with coronavirus potentially or, or any, other any virus. virus, give us some tips for boosting our immunity. Right, so the general uh, prevention of any viruses, and specifically coronavirus, is to keep your barriers strong. Okay. Wash, out, wash your hands. There are okay. techniques for washing hands, uh, water, One, at least 20 seconds, at least 20 seconds, singing the song, happy birthday while you're washing it between <laughs> your fingers, under the nails, make sure you do it uh, as frequently as four or five times a day, with especially soap. with soap. Does it matter what temperature the water is? Doesn't matter. As long as your water washes all their dirt and, and viruses from the skin. Okay. Tip. And another tip. Okay. When you're washing your hands with the soap. Also wash your nasal orifices with the soap and then wash it off. That will actually improve and decrease the contamination of your mucous membranes from the virus. I did not know that. Should you use like a Q-tip or no? It's just okay. with your after you, you wash your hands, hands. Make sure you wash your hands first yes, before you stick them in your nose. Another really good, bad. Yes. Another really good tip is to use their normal saline nasal spray. Okay. On a regular basis, just to flush your mucous membranes from the mucus, which is the ideal uh, environment. environment for the viruses to multiply for any viruses. So just doing that two, three times a day will reduce their exposure to the viruses okay. and a multiplication of the viruses on their mucous membranes. And that's the port of entry for any viruses. Okay. Their respiratory, respiratory Getting respiratory good tract. sleep. Getting a good sleep, keeping your immune system strong, number one requirement is to get adequate amount of sleep. Okay. Seven, eight hours of uninterrupted sleep is the must. Okay, taking, also supplements. Taking so. some supplements. Uh, my favorites are vitamin D, at least five to 10,000 units per day. Make sure you check your vitamin D level. Uh, the requirements for an adequate immune system is between 50 and 80. Uh, we're probably all under, under their normal range. Uh, vitamin A is a great protection from uh, viruses as well. Uh, some of their supplements like vitamin uh, vitamin we said, but uh, echinacea herb is one of my favorites. And I, yeah, and I take elderberry, which and you told me is a good immune booster as Excellent. well. Excellent, yes. Okay. And uh, there's plenty of other uh, good healthy tips. I personally love to use their 
uh, silver, um, mm. not colloidal silver, but homeopathic silver. And of course, uh, ho some homeopathic medication like astelacoxinum that you can get in any pharmacy. Okay, what about surgical masks? Now we're seeing people wearing them a little bit more, yes. even in places they didn't used to. Good idea, bad idea, useful, useless? I think it's a good idea to have it okay. available to you, but wearing it while you are totally in normal health is not necessary. Okay. It will not really protect you from getting sick. But if you're but sick. if you are sick, you're absolutely right, Michelle, then you would definitely need to wear it because you don't want to contaminate everybody else. If okay. you're sneezing, if you're coughing, you want to keep the mask on. And when and traveling. stay home. If you are sick, yes. please Rule stay number one, home. stay home. Yes. Get adequate amount of rest. Let your immune system to, to fight the virus. When traveling, though, you do recommend, even if you're well, to use the mask. I do. I like to travel with my mask in my purse because beside the fact that you, I'm protecting myself from air or that other people are breathing on the airplane, I also don't like to inhale the fumes, toxic fumes from the jet that also will diminish my immune system ability to fight any viruses or bacteria. Okay, that's good to know. Back to the anxiety-producing effects of all of this news. How do we tamp down the fear? What are some tips for that? Well, I think the number one thing is, again, sleep. Okay. Getting adequate amount of sleep. Sleep does everything. Sleep is how we get enough sleep. Absolutely. Yeah. And then um, if you having a difficult time to sleep, please use the methods of meditation, other relaxation that work for you. Mm -hmm. For some people, exercise are working great. For mm -hmm. other people, it's just deep breathing and yeah. relaxation. Um, whatever magnesium works for you. Yes. My, so some of the supplements, magnesium, some of the herbs like CBD, hemp oil, or kava, well, kava valerian root, whatever works for you. We, we have a variety of this products here at the well. Um, so ask as but the bottom it. line is, at this point in time, we don't have any real reason in the U.S. to be super, super anxious. The seasonal flu is much more prevalent than coronavirus. That's right. But to feel more in control with both anxiety and our ability to be protected, yes. follow those tips. So that, what we can do Lane is to keep, we can keep our immune system in the perfect state. One more thing I forgot to mention Go is the probiotic. Ah, yes. Make sure probiotics. you take a good probiotics throughout the whole winter, the right. whole flu season. Because or your microbiome season. controls your immunity, along yes. with many other because things. Because we're going to so keep more tip. friends on our side than our foes. Yes. Mm. Okay. So that's, that's the great tips. advice. If you have more questions, DM the Well account. Thank you, Dr. Elena. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Thank you.